morning, everyone. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We definitely will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. One quick thing. Read that on the board. We appreciate you, Pastor.
join me in an attitude of prayer. Almighty Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day. Lord, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit into this place, into our hearts and our minds. And this week, Lord, fill our minds and give them to you. Fill us with your thoughts. Give us what we should know. Open our eyes, Lord. Teach them to see this week your works, your glory, and what you would have us see. Open our ears, Lord, that we may hear your spirit and your word as it speaks to us. Take our hands, Lord, and set them to your work, the work that you would have us do in our place, that we may be your children. Take our tongues, Lord, and our mouths, and may come from them only your words, and not our own. We surrender them to you. Set our feet on the path that you would have us walk. Show us where to go. And Lord, take our hard, small hearts, and replace them with your love, your grace, that everyone we meet this week, not see us, but see you and know your glory and your love and come to understand redemption. Thank you, Lord, and we ask all these things in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Pray for Amanda Williams, whose mom is not doing very well. So pray for her and her family. Thank you. 
so my brother, which was their nephew, uh, the whole family, we pray. We, we, we will never know the hurt that she's feeling, that she has to endure losing both of her sons, 36 and 34 years old, to the COVID. And so please, as I pray, let's all be on one mindset. Heavenly Father, we have heard the cry of the needy. We lifted up the names of that was on the program. We heard the cry of the city petitions of your, of your children. But Lord, we're standing in the gap for a special need today. As a church, as a mother who has lost two sons within six weeks to this COVID-19. Pray for our strength. We pray that she can find peace. We pray, Lord, that she mourns and mourns in a healthy way, not to get stuck in depression or a doubt. But Lord, we ask that we come together as a collective church in one mindset and agreeing that we know that you are able to sustain her. We know that you are able to meet every need that she needs, Lord. We, Lord, we know that when she's weak and can't go on, you'll prop her up on every side. Your word says that you'll never give us no more than we can bear. We claim on your word, Lord. We're walking out in faith here as this church, a body of believers, stand with the sister in the gap for her, Lord. We lift up your name, Father. We lift up our children. We lift up her, Lord, and everything that she's holding dear and everything that she may be feeling right now, God. We know that you're able yes, you are. to give peace. Yes. And I thank you for this congregation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're able to stand in touch and agree. Yes. That you will make things better. Because we serve a God that can do the impossible. Yes, yes. We serve a God that loves us. Yes. And loves us too much to leave us the way we are. Thank you, God. Who's willing and able to change us. Yes, yes. We we'll give all glory to you now, Lord. Because we know you're working in love. Yes, yes. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
counsel thy words without knowledge. Gird up your loins like a lion. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determines this measurement? Surely you know. Or you stretch the line upon it. Or what were you basis sunk? Or what? Or who made it? When the morning stars sang together, and all the heavenly beings shout for joy. New Testament reading, Hebrews 5, 1 through 10. And the high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things, pretending, pretending to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sin. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself. And becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he said also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In, in the days of the flesh, Jesus suffered up prayers and supplication with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard. Because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience to what he suffered. And 
delayed to Sunday, so it's the one week out of the year the pastor doesn't have to prepare a sermon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he asked me to speak, and I couldn't come up with a good excuse real fast, so <laughs> here we are. He's got a heart to preach the gospel. Some are called, and some aren't. He talks real well about our Sunday school class, but sometimes I wonder it's because we're the only adult Sunday school class in the place, so <laughs> <laughs> make it pretty easy. <laughs> if y'all want to teach an adult Sunday school class, we'll get you started. <laughs> All right, well, y'all remember Shirley Lundgren? She was a stalwart of this church. And I remember one time, I, I think it was at one of her Friday dinners, uh, we were talking with Shirley about uh, lay people coming up here behind the pulpit, different ones and so on, and hi, Joanne, it's so good to see you, Mother Stalwart. And uh, she had an analysis of my work, <laughs> and I can't, I can't do her East Texas accent very well, but I'll never forget the hand gesture. She did well, right, you just get up there and blurt it out. <laughs> so, with Shirley's insight and my apologies, prepare for some blurting. <laughs> she was a doll. The New Testament scripture of Hebrews talks about those that are called to preach. And so I want y'all that were here last Sunday to think back at the 11 o'clock service. Did y'all have fun? Did, did. did y'all enjoy the music? Yes. Did y'all feel the presence of the Holy Spirit? Yes. We had different things happen. Our beloved, talented, and very professional John Gibson even broke character. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to see those that look so perfect. <laughs> so we love John more today than we did last week. <laughs> Pastor uses the tablet because he's a modern guy and I'm on the big chief point. <laughs> the best part for me was Reverend Waddle's sermon. He had got squeezed into just a scrap of a few minutes. And by God, he gave me the picture. Yes, yes. We're all stuck on that boat of sin, going down that river of grace to the ocean of God's mercy. Yes. And then he turned right around and said, Don't give up the redemption of Christ, or you're going to be like that house across the street. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, indeed. Abandoned, yes. decrepit ready for condemnation. These pastors, they're called. They jump off that boat. They sink to the bottom of that river and God starts working on them. Yes. Y'all ever seen a river stone? Ever seen a river stone chimney? They use them in architecture a lot. They look like a potato almost. All the rough edges are smoothed off. God calls these guys to do this job, and they agree, I'm not going to live where I choose to live. I'm not going to do with my time what I choose to do. I am going to do what God tells me to do. Yes, yes. They have to deal with tragedies that are not their own. Mm -hmm. Laity, we get to stick to this our tragedy. And we get to say, well, I'm not going to church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. We get inside a lot of things. They don't get inside anything. They share our suffering. They share our joys. And that is a task. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, if you've ever had somebody tell you their trouble, sometimes it can cause you to get in a lot of trouble. These pastors, they go for it. They say, come on, Lord, I'm with you. And I'm going to do it. And we get thanks for that. 
And I tell you what, our Sunday service last last week could not have happened without Reverend Walker. Right. Yes, yes. And so I wonder if you'd join me in a moment of appreciation he doesn't have to ask for. <laughs> <laughs> For him being here, yes. and join me in our hope for the future of him with us.
just a second <laughs> and turn back, and that healthy three-year-old is nowhere to be found. <laughs> okay, good. We're all in the same boat. <laughs> Many years ago, back in the Stone Age, and when my children were young, I was a great dad. So uh, I had to do some business, and I was in charge of those two little toddlers. <laughs> and so I said, well, I'll just take them with me. I'm a parent extraordinary. <laughs> and uh, so I carried them down to Paul Bank Building in Corpus Christi and went up to about the <coughs> floor and took care of my business and everything's going just fine. And the reception desk is about three steps from the elevator. And so I go over there and I push that elevator button and I realize I hadn't had my parking validated. And you know, I want to save those $2. <laughs> 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 So I said, I'll just turn around, and I'm getting my parking validated, and I hear the elevator ding. And by the time I turn around, it was just as long. <laughs> Those doors are closing, and there's my 27-month-old daughter, Carrie, alone on the elevator. <laughs> Y'all know what abject Carrie is? <laughs> the world just collapses all around you. Every horrible thing that can happen in 11 floors of an elevator going down a building is going to happen. You know it. In your heart, it's the end. You might as well jump out that window. Of course, it wasn't that bad, but being parent extraordinary. Receptionist called the lobby and praised the Lord. It didn't stop until it got to the lobby. So she couldn't go off and explore vacant floors. <laughs> and they corralled her when she got down there and started exploring the lobby. And everything turned out all right. The worst thing I had to suffer was the bank vice president lecturing me on how men should never be left alone in charge. <laughs> <laughs> and I think he went in my boat because he had never been left alone in the three row. <laughs> well, we four last about 100 miles from here in a little town called Plantersville in Grimes County, just right over there, right by the Aggie Expressway. Y'all know where that is. Araceli Nunez was unloading groceries with her mother, and she had let her three year old out of his car seat to play in the yard while they did their task of unloading the groceries house with a load and she came back out and her little boy Christopher was nowhere to be found. Mm. Mm. Well, she had the same feeling I did. We're on the same boat. Same feeling y'all might have had in those circumstances, even if it was just for a little while. And she began searching and searching and searching. And she ran into a neighbor who said, well, I saw him following the dog into the woods. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Dad gum that time about that time the dog didn't come trotting out of the woods without Chris. So, oh my, oh my heart said. She's got the sheriff on the phone within 20 minutes and a search commences. Hundreds of searches. And you know we're in Texas, so Texas Equifax, Equ, what's it called? Equine search gets involved, and there are hundreds from Wednesday evening, they start searching. Now that part of Grimes County is a, I guess it's a unique geological feature because you can't clear, uh, clear the forest and plant things and grows. The Weaver family used to have a big honey outfit down there. Now they just do bees, but it's big, big woods. It's, you might as well be in San Augustine or over there by Three Bend or someplace in Louisiana because it is big, big woods. Mm -hmm. And they're looking and they're looking and they're looking. Thursday comes, and Thursday goes. No luck. Friday comes, and they search all day. No luck. This kid has been gone since Wednesday afternoon. Well, a fella who uh, only reluctantly revealed his uh, identity, his name was Tim Alden, and uh, he's kind of an old curmudgeon and doesn't watch the news or follow social media or anything. He goes to his every other Friday night Bible study. Every other. <laughs> and 
And here's all these people talking about this boy. This boy that's missing. Because they all live right there around Plantersville. And it's, it's the news. And he's, he goes to his Bible study. And he goes through it. And at the end, he hears the Holy Spirit. Tell him, Tim, you go look for that boy. And you're going to find him. Now, I like the rest of us good old lady. He doesn't get in a big old rush. He goes home from Bible study. It's the hay. He wakes up Saturday morning, does his Bible reading, says his prayers, gets ready to go about his day's activities. And his wife asks him, well, Tim, what are your plans for today? Y'all ever ask each other that? <laughs> Y'all the same boat. And he says, well, I'm going to go look for that boy. And I guess she might have rolled her eyes or something, you know, because there's hundreds of people out there looking. And she probably had some things that he needed to be doing that he hadn't done for the last six months. She'd been asking him about them. <laughs> yes, <that boat>. <laughs> <laughs> checking, just checking. <laughs> so, Dad Fern, excuse my language, Dad Fern, he doesn't go out there. He starts falling a pipeline right away because, really, that's the only way you can walk around in those thick, thick, thick woods. And he starts hearing some strange noises and he thinks, you know, that could be a fawn maybe or a, or a baby bobcat or something, or a hurt rabbit. And he's hearing some noises and he says, well, I better let folks know anyway. And he calls the searchers and says, I'm hearing some funny noises over here. Y'all better come over. So they come over and they start looking. And he keeps looking. And he hears the searchers calling Christopher. Oh, so that's the case. <laughs> and he goes a little further and he starts calling Christopher said in Spanish, here I am. <laughs> and Tim went out there and found that boy 10 yards into the forest. Now, we don't know what went on those three days. How a three-year-old survived from Wednesday afternoon. Those odds are not good. <laughs> those odds are bad. Till Saturday morning is unbelievable. Apparently, Chris was kind of all right. He had stripped off all his clothes. Who knows, three-year-olds? He might have done that right off the bat. But uh, he was thirsty and he was hungry. But, of course, in abundance of caution, they'd take him to the hospital to keep an eye on and make sure everything's all right. And it was. And he got home to Araceli. And poor old Araceli. She had to tell him, I'm a good mother. It wasn't more than two minutes. <laughs> And you know she was just beating herself up. But you know what? We're all in that same boat. We're all in that same boat. And that boat is sin. And a fellow named Tim said, Jesus, you are my Savior. And I can't do anything without you. He jumped off that boat into that river of grace. And when the Holy Spirit told him to get out there and go look for that boy... Well, he didn't get after it right away. <laughs> but he got after it. And by God, God's will and glory was realized. That is an amazing story. Yes. And a revelation of God's glory and God's will and the way he works through us later. Our Old Testament scripture is the end of the story of Job. Job can be a very obtuse story. Hard to understand. Mm -hmm. What in the heck are they talking about? And this scripture comes at the very end. And Job, he's done his part. He's suffered. He's suffered. He lost everything. From having all those camels and all those children and all those houses to having nothing and being sick and hurt. And he still had faith in God. Yes. His dear wife even told him, Yo, you just need to go on and curse God and die. Mm -hmm. Because I'm tired of this suffering too. <coughs> I thought I'd turn this thing off. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and so here we come at the very end of the story and God is not real nice he 
does not mince words. He says, you guys don't know anything. You cannot know my mind. You cannot know my ways. You cannot be who you need to be. I talked a little bit with Pastor about this, and since the Cowboys aren't coming on, I'm going to tell you this other story. <laughs> <laughs> Down in Columbus, which is a great town. <laughs>
humble, and smooth, and made better by surrender to Jesus Christ. He's always right there. He's always there. He's always waiting. But it's his sacrifice that allows us to be the kind of good that we know we need to be. To be the kind of good that God wants us to be. And if we do it enough, we might get told to go find a little three-year-old lost in the woods. We cleaned our own little boat. We might end up like Ike. No family, no children. Dead with a couple of bottles of chloroform by your bedside. We're not for our pastors bringing us this gospel message every Sunday Amen. and providing an altar call that we might come say, Jesus, mm -hmm. I surrender all, baby. Mm -hmm. To not be able to stand around the piano with John as he plays our outro and sing a little, what was it we were singing that gave the song? <laughs> I don't remember. It's great. It's great. <laughs> Those things are possible thanks to the sacrifice, the redemption offered us by Jesus Christ on the cross. That's Amen. Yes. So thank you all for your time this morning. See, I wrapped up in time anyway. Still got Ike in there. I don't know if I'm going to have any trouble out of Colorado County, but we'll find out. I'd like to close in prayer. Jesus, I'm a sinner. I don't know anything about sin. I can't have it. I have to give it up to you. Come into my heart. Be my Savior. Make your, me your child. Help me to repent and move forward in your grace. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Amen.
this benediction, God's will. God's will. Nothing, nothing more. Nothing more. And nothing else. Nothing. Tell somebody, love them for real. Amen. 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 Amen.